Good to talk to all of you. Tell me where you're joining us from and what you are all up to. I'm a recent graduate from the University of North Texas where I studied broadcast journalism. And Yamish, I've always looked up to you so much. So this is really such a privilege to be able to talk to you. I'm Jayla, I'm in Boone, Maryland. I'm currently in um, a production assistant with Student Reporting Labs. I'm Angeline, I'm from Houston, Texas, and I'm a student at the University of Houston studying media production. Mercedes, you talked about being excited to, to talk to me. Um, we all, of course, have women that we look up to. Um, talk to me a little bit about representation and role models. Vice President-elect Harris said in her post-election address. But while I may be the first woman in this office, I will not be the last. What does it mean to all of you to ha have a woman be elected for the first time Vice President of the United States? It's just crazy how it's taken this long to get here and it's almost as if she's kind of representing the rest of us that live here to say, hey, we live here too, we can have authority. It just felt like another barrier that was put in place to hold us back got knocked down. I think about the younger generations. So for them to see something like that, that's just so positive and just be like, oh, I look like her too, or oh, my mom looks like her and feel like they can also just accomplish things and good things are happening in the world. I really find that just really beautiful. How does your background resonate with all of you, especially given the fact that we are, of course, all women of color sitting here right now? As a person of color, like I've grown up with black siblings, black aunts, black uncles, a black mom, black dad. And I think Kamala with that perspective can speak to a lot of the issues that people like me face in America. I've seen a lot of comments where people say, oh, she's not actually black, she's not actually Indian. I've always been super conflicted. Like I know I'm American, but what's the definition of being a true American? Or am I even really Filipino because I live here? And that's always been an internal struggle for me. You don't have to be one type of black in a way, like you can be made up of several ethnicities and still be black. And I was glad to see how Kamala really handled it. She was just like, this is who I am, this is my identity. If you don't like it, oh well, I'm black. You can try to tell me I'm not, but I know I'm, I am. And I really appreciated that. When you think of your life, who are you looking up to? Who have you looked up to in the past? Growing up, I honestly never really had women of color that I could look up to, I guess just besides my mom. Of course, my mother and the women around me. Of course, Gwen Eiffel, she was one person I really looked up to because I would just watch her and just be like, I could do that. And that's honestly how I got into journalism in the first place. I have to say the theme of this conversation seems to be moms. My biggest inspiration is definitely my mother. She immigrated here from Haiti in the 1970s, went on to get a PhD. Seeing her do her job as a single mom raising my brother and me in Miami, um, it was just inspiring to see her. She was someone who I felt like just powered through life. And when I used to, when I still hit roadblocks, I think, well, my mom did this. What do you think your generation is facing that maybe other women didn't, or maybe you're, you're facing some of the same things that other women um, in, your, in, in past generations faced? For me, I've just had um, a few instances where I would be doing something in this field, like a film project or something like that. And just a few people have told me, oh, it's great to see people or women like you doing stuff like this. And it was never a bad thing. I guess I just never really realized why that was important or what like the big deal was. I actually have this conversation a lot with my mom. She always tells me, she's like, your generation is just so different from mine because she immigrated here in, I believe in the early eighties from Nigeria. So she's like certain things that you just feel free to say and do, I didn't. I sometimes have to tell you, I'm amazed at the fact that I'm a White House correspondent, that I'm sitting next to Judy Woodruff, someone that has covered so many presidents, sitting on set. Sometimes I get starstruck, even though Judy's my boss, even though Judy's someone that I talk to all the time, I text with her, I go drink tea at her house. I still think to myself, oh my God, I get to work with Judy Woodruff. Oh my God, I'm a national correspondent. I get to be on TV. Sometimes when the lights come on, I'm like, oh my God, it's a million people watching. What am I gonna do? That to me is how you stay humble. It's how you stay good at your job because you recognize the privilege that you occupy. Talk to me a little bit about this administration. What beyond representation do you hope Vice President Harris and this administration will accomplish? I just hope that this new administration will bring back the climate conversation. As someone who literally just graduated into a pandemic in December 2019, I would love to see 
what this administration would do for the student loan crisis in America because so many Americans are not financially free and that just is like shackles on them. I also just hope that they keep the promises that they promised to the the black community and the um, community of color. I get a lot of times people asking me, um, what advice would you give to young women of, to, who want to get into the media? What advice would you give to them? The biggest advice I could give you is to just do the work and to find people who believe in you. For the people who don't believe in you, leave them aside. Go find mentors, go find editors, go find producers who see what you see in yourself, who, who are confident in the fact that, that you can continue to grow. Yes, you're going to make mistakes. I've made mistakes. I've had to get corrections in the New York Times. I've had to do I've had to do over stand-ups 20 times because I couldn't get the teleprompter right. You will make mistakes just like everyone makes mistakes. But know that if you press forward, if you keep your eye on the prize, you can get that. And I will tell you, I'm someone who was told, maybe you're not pretty enough to be on TV. Maybe you're not skinny enough to be on TV. Maybe you should straighten your hair. I didn't take any of that. Luckily, my mother was there to say, you are beautiful. You're going to go exactly the way you are. Make sure that you have a fundamental core and remember who you are. So thank you so much, ladies, for talking. Thank you so much for sharing this space with me. I'm so excited to see all of you succeed, that we can call you part of the PBS family. Thank you so much.